As Donald Trump's first criminal trial began today in New York City, I couldn't help but think about the remarkable split screen the country is watching play out in real time. It is a presidential election year. On the left, you have Donald Trump, the former commander in chief, seated on the defense side of a Manhattan courtroom. On the right, you have the current commander in chief, President Biden, in the actual situation room, overseeing the response to an Iranian attack against Israel. That's a split screen. Over the next six weeks, the contrast between the two candidates running for president is going to be stark. We don't know how Americans will digest it, but it will be quite a difference between the guy sitting in the courtroom and the guy governing the country. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman of New York. Before getting to Congress, he was an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. He is also a former colleague of District Attorney Alvin Bragg and Donald Trump's defense attorney, Todd Blanche. That would be quite a dinner party I would like to attend with you. So let me start here, Congressman, because one of the things that struck me about today is that you know, there's this perception out there that this trial, or there has been, is somehow the most politically helpful to Donald Trump, that it is advantageous to him. But I was kind of impressed by the storytelling a bit and all of the details that were discussed today, some of which I'd even forgotten about. And in a recent poll, I mean, 64 percent of voters say the charges in the hush money trial are at least somewhat serious. We'll see. We don't know how it will impact voters. But if you were talking to a voter, you're an elected official, you're a politician, but you are a former prosecutor, what would you say to them about why this case matters to them? This case matters because it's about our democracy. It's about whether or not our elections are going to be free and fair and decided ultimately by the people based on the rule of law and election law. And what Donald Trump is alleged to have done is to pay off not one but two potential different uh, women to silence them from coming out with very damaging information in the weeks in before the election. And you'll recall there was that famous access Hollywood tape, which uh, received significant attention and Donald Trump received significant blowback for it. So it was clear that if there was one more thing that came out about his um, his poor behavior, so to speak, misconduct uh, with women or otherwise, uh, that would have a damaging effect. And so in order to avoid that, he paid off a porn star, Stormy Daniels, in order to keep her quiet. But he did it in an illegal scheme to cover it up so that no one would know that he did it. And he did it to avoid campaign finance laws. And so you're going to see a sort of summary of all of these things. But this goes to the core heartland of what our elections are about, which is that transparency and following the rule of law is essential to our democracy having free and fair elections. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a through line among some of these cases, which I think often people forget. I want to ask you about these two. I mean, you, you worked with Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. You also worked with Todd Blanche. I joked about a dinner party. That's not going to happen. But what should people, people like to project onto these prosecutors, who they are or the defense attorneys, what should people know or understand about each of them, their style, their strengths as they're watching this trial unfold? Well, you know, the great thing about being a prosecutor is uh, I had no idea what their political leanings may have been when we were prosecutors together. We didn't discuss it. That is not what a prosecutor's job is. They are both true professionals. Um, DA Bragg will uh, treat this case with the respect that the justice system deserves. He will only speak through his prosecutors in court and court documents. You will not see any press conferences. He will not politicize this. He will let the facts and the evidence speak uh, as, as to whether they are applied uh, sufficiently to the law to get a conviction. And Todd Blanche is also a professional. Uh, he's been a defense lawyer for a while, was an excellent prosecutor. And I, I think you will see uh, much better defense lawyering from uh, Mr. Blanche than you may have seen in the civil case that Donald Trump uh, had a couple months ago. I also wanted to ask you just about the jury selection process. We all learned a lot. I, I became fascinated by the jury selection process today. Who knew? Did anything stick out to you about the number of people who pulled themselves out of it or the length of the questionnaire? Anything surprising to you? Well, it's always interesting when people self-select their own biases. Um, you know, I, I sat for jury duty as a former prosecutor, and I actually had a judge ask me, say, can, are you sure you can be fair and impartial? 
which I found insulting. Of course I can be fair and impartial. Just because I'm a prosecutor does not mean that I can't look at the facts and the evidence like anybody else would. And so I wonder who is actually pulling him or herself out because of bias. Is it bias against Trump? Is it bias for Trump? It's very hard to tell. But I am glad that there will be an exhaustive voir dire of the jurors because I do think that the sanctity of the jury pool is going to be vital in this trial. This is going to be a model for many Americans as to how criminal trials work, how our country's rule of law operates, and how no person, whether the former president or anyone else, is above the law. Donald Trump will be treated as any other defendant will be. All of his politicization and his partisanship and his campaigning outside of the courtroom will not be allowed in the courtroom. The only thing that will come in will be facts and evidence according to the rule of law, and these jurors will ultimately decide whether or not the evidence proved beyond a reason, proves beyond a reasonable doubt that Donald Trump committed these crimes. That's what our great system is based on. And so now that the trial is actually beginning, as someone who did a number of trials, I'm, I'm excited for the American people to actually see how this process should work and why it should apply to Donald Trump and everyone else in this country, no matter their stature or power. He walked down the same hallway, sat in the same chair as other defendants, which stuck out to me today. Congressman Dan Goldman, thank you so much for making time for us this evening. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.